Great reaction is for mature audiences only. So if you can't stand the heat, stay away from the fire. Another beautiful day to be a raider, draped in the silver and black. I represent the shield, and I represent the swords. It's that time of night again, Raider Nation. And you come back. Why? Because it's time. It's time to bring them. What's up, Raider Nation? I... Coming to you live, as always, from Hardcore Challenge Live Studios. And where is that, might you ask? Well, let me give you some simple directions. It's just down the street, past the house with the boarded up windows. Make sure you stop and ask my man Joe. He's a gentleman and a scholar, as well as a man of commerce. Slip him what you need to and he will point you in the right direction. You're going to take a left and then a right. Or is it a right and then a left? Make sure you slip Joe what you need, or you'll end up where you don't want to be. Now as you find yourself strolling down the street, you're going to pass a deep, dark alley to your immediate right. As you stroll past that alley, a cool breeze hits you that chills you to your skeletal core. 
Is it the autumn wind? You goddamn right. Should you venture down that deep dark alley? Well, of course you should. Because what you'll find at the end is a little place that we like to call deep behind the enemy line. This is Raider Reaction, and this is the Game 7 wrap-up with yours truly, the Kamish. So, Twenty-four hours removed. How does it feel? How does one in six feel? How'd you enjoy going to work? And listening to How About Them Raiders? Boy, couldn't beat the Colts. How'd you like that? I enjoyed it. You know, I have an ex-Indianapolis Colts wide receiver that works for me. Who was waiting for me this morning to rub it in my fucking face? Lovely. Great start to my Monday morning. Knowing that son of a bitch was gonna be waiting for me as soon as I walked in the office. Good stuff. And what he come at me with? Some Colts Nation shit. I just looked at him square in the face and said, what is that, some fucking third world country I never heard of? There ain't no such fucking thing as Colts Nation. Get the fuck out of here. You want a game, but let's not get carried away, pal. All right? Let's not get stupid. Colts whatever the fuck you are. Colts Corral or horse shit. Whatever. You were a 2-5 and five team, and we had to take you to the limit, so fuck you. You're nothing. So, week seven, well, actually week eight, game seven of, <laughs> I already told him when I hired him, if you were a Raider, I'd have paid you more, um, and I meant that, and I still do. Yeah, don't, don't hit me up for no overtime, you prick. Um, week seven of our... 2018 season we seen life out of the offense Derek Carr looked looked solid he was efficient um, when he did push the ball down the field he scored touchdowns but still he had a a lot of balls 10 yards and under um, a lot of balls five yards and under as a whole was not stretching the field and really pushing the envelope although did have the three touchdowns it's very efficient, but you have to say, would you not have an incompletion in there somewhere if you were trying to force the ball just a little bit and try to make something happen? But as a whole, the offense played well. They unfortunately started out slow and ended even slower. But in the middle, they were good. The offensive line played well. Derek Carr had time in the pocket. He, he, The happy feet weren't there this week. He stood strong. He moved around inside the pocket, found passing lanes, and, and was being very efficient with the ball. I want to see him stretch the field just a little more. I'd like to see more of those 15-yard, 20-yard routes mixed in there with them 5 to 10 yards. I, I, have, I believe those are there. I believe that sometimes he just doesn't want to pull the trigger. Because he doesn't want to make that mistake. And when you got a quarterback that starts thinking like that, I mean, your, your typical gunslinger, they don't give a shit. They're going to put it in there. Brett Favre didn't give a shit. He'd throw the damn ball in there. He threw a lot of picks. He threw a damn shitload of touchdowns too. So, you kind of got to have that mentality where you can, you'll just stick it in there. If it doesn't go, do it again doesn't do, do it again but as a whole the offensive line played well um car had had a lot of pressure but let's grade that on a curve shall we let's remember who we had here we had the two and five colts on the road this is not exactly a defensive or offensive juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination so let's grade things on a curve just a little bit. And dial back that. 
Now, moving from offensive line to quarterback, let's talk about the running back position, shall we? Now, anybody that's watched my show, uh, follows the page, clearly knows how I felt about Doug Martin. Um, he was my what-the-fuck signing in the offseason. He... I, I just don't understand how he just kept hanging around, hanging around. Every time I would see him in the game for, for a, a play or two, it, it was pretty much two yards in a cloud of dust and nothing. I seen Jalen Richard through six games not have a single fumble, fix all the fumble issues he had in 2017, was damn near our only bright spot, damn near our leading receiver. He's, he's one of the only sparks you see on, on our offense the offensive side of the ball over the past several weeks at the number two running back position. Now, if you're the number two and the other guy's only getting a scattering of plays here and there and the number one goes down, wouldn't you logically assume that the guy who's played for six weeks, caught all the balls out of the backfield, has taken the snaps from uh, b behind the quarterback, and hasn't fumbled the ball and done nothing but be positive for you this season, don't you think that guy might get a little extra opportunities to tote the fucking rock on Sunday? And maybe not Doug fucking Martin. Now, I a bunch of people, you know, because I said, uh, Doug, I listen, I should never have to see Doug Martin again. I felt that way weeks ago. And so here we go. Beast mode goes down, let's throw in Doug Martin. And I heard it today. Oh, but Doug Martin was having a great game until then. Until then. Until then. Until then. You know what Doug Martin is? Doug Martin's a used tire. Sure. You can put that used tire on your car. You could go out on the freeway. And you could probably go 100 miles per hour in that sucker. But for how long? For how long? You want to put everything on a used tire that you know is going to blow and fail you at any time? That's what Doug Martin is. That's what people don't understand. When you say, oh, but he had 74 yards and he had oh, oh, about this many a carry. Yeah. He's a used fucking tire. Waiting to pop. And what happened? He busts through the line in the most crucial time of the game. One arm toting the fucking rock and gets it tomahawked. Do you see beast mode busting through the line in a crucial time like that? One arm toting the rock. He's got that bitch and he's fucking hitting that motherfucker. No. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You put everything. Exactly, Rip. You put your whole family in the car. And you're going to head down the road on this used tire. Yeah, it got you almost all the way there. And then it blew. And then it blew. You almost got there, you cheap bastard. You almost got the family there on vacation. Ah, the, then the tire blew, you know, 15 miles down the road. That's Doug Martin. I don't want to use tire. All right? How about we give one that's got a lot of miles on it, who I'm not worried about blowing? Let's give Richard a chance. He He's fixed every problem he had in 2017, and he's been nothing but solid. I say give him a chance. He should have been the number one. He should have been promoted. He was already the number two. How do you promote the guy who's number three when the number one goes down? I don't get that. Don't get that. And DeAndre Washington came in. He looked healthy. He looked quick. And my God, I hope we see more of him this week and less Doug Martin. I, I, I don't ever want to see Doug Martin again. I've seen the best Doug Martin I'm ever going to see. Period. What? Go watch some old Bucks film. If if that guy's never even gonna be that good again. I I don't I. No. 
Let's give the young guys a shot. I, I don't need to see what this old guy can do. I don't. Because obviously the season's a wash anyway. So let's let somebody play who's trying to prove something. Because what's this guy trying to prove? He, he, he's, he's, on his, he's on the last leg of a career on a team that's going nowhere in 2018. Now, moving on to wide receiver and tight ends, uh, we had we had some some nice action out of the uh, wide receivers and tight ends this week, for sure. Uh, Jared Cook continues to be the the consistent guy out there in the receiving court every single week. Four receptions, 74 yards out of five targets, and a touch. Touchdown! 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 Reds. Jared Cook. Uh, one of the three, um, Seth Roberts also gets one, and Brandon LaFell, who basically, we were um, curious as to how the uh, wide receiving core was going to shake out once you pull Coop out as basically your number one, whether he was ever actually a really number one, remains to be seen. He never really was here. I would have called Crabtree as much our number one as I ever would have called Coop. He was always supposed to be, but you pull Coop out. It looked, rumors were, like they, they might slide uh, Dwayne Harris up in there, but he ended up being Brandon LaFell, who, who we've touched on a little bit, but he's, he's the guy that got signed, and he just kind of disappeared in the depth chart. But you plug in Brandon LaFell, and all of a sudden, it's the Brandon LaFell coming out party. He gets three catches for 39 yards and a touchdown, has his uh, silver and black coming out party, and, hey, look, look at what we found. Maybe it's a wide receiver. Now, that makes, that makes you wonder, where was this guy up until this point? You got Jordy Nelson, who's barely used again. He's targeted four times, gets one catch for 14 yards. Martavius Bryant doesn't even get targeted at all. So that it makes you wonder, where was Brandon LaFell? Why wasn't he worked in somewhere? Why were we seeing him on any snaps at all? Also makes you wonder, like, what, what are they really... What's up with Martavius Bryant? He just he seems to always be... They try to pull him back in, and then he still seems to be the guy on the outs that, that just really doesn't get the action. I mean, Jordy only got one... But he was targeted four times, so he could have had a much better game. Um, it wasn't like he wasn't looked at. He just didn't have the success when he was. Didn't have the success when he was. So it's uh, it was an interesting day on offense, but as an off the offense as a whole put up points. You put score 28 in the NFL, and typically uh, week in, week out, you got a damn good chance to win. But uh, not when the opposing team puts up 42. You got a defense like a fucking sieve. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, I did want to touch on, at first, I would like to thank each and every one of you. Uh, Rip Raider, T Courts, Lions, Jukebox, Craig. Uh, each and every one of you. Too many to name. Thank you all. Those that have stopped in, those that are still here. Thank you for joining us, one and all. Our band of pirates. Thank you for joining us on Raider Reaction. I always appreciate any second you spend with us. Uh, any second you spend here is the second you're spending away from something else, and we appreciate it. Any time you spend with us. And to show our appreciation with the time you spend with us on Raider Reaction, we got a, we got an action-packed week packed for you as we've got, obviously, the Battle of the Bay on Thursday night as the, the Raiders travel to take on the 49ers across the bay. Tomorrow night, we have our uh, standard Tuesday show, the Raider Nation Report, a solid hour of everything silver and black with yours truly. On Wednesday, Prime will be back as we drop back deep in the pocket for Ghost of the Post. As Prime joins me as we rip through all of our picks, get you caught up with where the standings are. As we were off last week, we'll give you the uh, standings from the last two weeks where Prime and I are in our yearly contest and see who's ahead as we make all of our weekly predictions along with those of you in attendance. Then on Thursday, because we will not have the Raider Nation ricochet with uh, Captain Jack in studio. That will be the following week. He'll be back. Because this week on Thursday is game day. And of course on game day, 
you got the Raider Reaction official halftime show, and then your Raider Reaction live post-game reaction with yours truly. And uh, hopefully, I'm really getting sick of pissed off reactions, so I'm hoping for a little celebration reaction this week, so we'll see. But, man, if we lose again, I, ca I cannot be held accountable for anything that I may say in my post-game reaction, because it ain't going to be pretty. But, we got a little extra something. Since it's a special Battle of the Bay, the last Battle of the Bay, and oh, hopefully a winnable game, we're going to have a little uh, pregame raffle, a little Raider reaction, reaction shop raffle. So starting an hour before kickoff, we will kick off the Raider reaction, reaction shop raffle. We've got a bunch of stuff to give away. We've got some patches, some Raider Reaction t-shirts, um, some vintage Raider Reaction football cards out of my personal collection. Um, bunch of stuff we're going to give away. Uh, the day before, on Wednesday, I will post all the information so that you can purchase your raffle tickets during the day on Thursday. The raffle tickets will also be sold live right on the show through our PayPal account all the way up until the second it's auctioned off or raffled off. So, make sure you're checking out the page on Wednesday. We will post all the information about the raffle Wednesday night. And then Thursday, you, you can get your raffle tickets. The, all the raffle tickets are going to be $1 items, $3 items, and there'll be one $5 item. But uh, most of them will be $1, $3 items, and we're going to give away um, a bunch of... We're going to give away some stuff. Those... Just watching in attendance. And Raymond, you'll be very happy because there are two shirts in the works right now. And I'm going over actually this week to discuss the production of them. And I think uh, all of you that follow the show will be very, very happy and be pleased. And I'm sure you're going to want one of both of these shirts when they come out. Oh, yes. I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. But, since there is also, of course, Friday's Black Friday, because, you know, Friday's Black Friday. And we'll have another classic game for you. But Sunday, since we don't got a game Sunday, and we got to sit around and watch everybody else play, I, we, we, we got enough stuff that we broke out. We're going to have another Reaction Shop raffle Sunday night. Time to be announced. We will post all the information. So two raffles this week. Two opportunities to tune in. Two opportunities to win you some free Raider Reaction swag. Two opportunities to win you some vintage uh, Raider gear. Some Ra vintage Raider swag. Some patches. Thursday night pregame. And Sunday when we don't have a game. And then also one more contest. One more. The biggest contest the Raider Reaction has ever had. Why? Because we're thankful for each and every one of you. We've just eclipsed over 30,000 followers on the page. Um, we're about to hit 800 followers on our Twitter account. And we're about to hit 500 on our Instagram account. So we're growing. We've got 195, almost 200 um, subscribers to our YouTube channel as well. So we're, we're still growing, and our mission to paint the world silver and black continues. So in the month of November, we want to show how thankful we are for each and every one of you that has helped us get to the point where we're at, because without the Raider Nation and the support of the Raider Nation, we would be nowhere. So our biggest contest ever will be announced November 1st. It's a very, very big prize pack. The biggest prize pack ever. The Bo Jackson plaque is included in it. You get a Black Raider Reaction t-shirt, Gray Raider Reaction t-shirt. 2017 and 2018 NFL sticker books. Several lots of vintage Raider cards. The still in the plastic 
with the certificate. The dry fit Nike shirt that was personally given to me the day before he lit up the AFC Pro Bowl in 2018 at the Pro Bowl practice. The shirt that Derek Carr personally gave me with a nice little uh, certificate and plaque commemorating um, how it was, you know, arrived to be. And some other stuff too. But I'm just saying, it's, it's a badass prize pack to win. And we're going to announce all the details of how you can win, how you get your entry in, and the, int the winners will be drawn in between games on Thanksgiving Day. But just our way of saying thank you to one special follower, but have a little fun over at the time. So, all the details for that contest we are going to drop in just a couple days, November 1st, Thursday. We'll drop all the information and how you can get your entries in. To get one entry will be pretty easy. But there's also going to be ways throughout the month for you to earn extra entries into the gigantic raffle for the name that we're going to draw on Thanksgiving Day. So if you follow the page, you're active on the page, you watch the shows, you're going to know. And you're going to get extra chances to get your name in. Of course, it only takes one to win. But hey, if somebody's got one name in the hat and somebody's got 50, somebody's got a hell of a lot better odds of winning. That's all I'm saying. So, all the information will be posted on the page on the 1st. So, we got a raffle on Thursday pregame and a raffle on Sunday when they're in the game. So, make sure you check out this week. We got a lot of uh, flavor for you on Raider Reaction all week. Raider Nation Report tomorrow, Prime with me on Thursday. All the game day action, pre-game, halftime, post-game, and then, of course, Friday, Black Friday. And then Sunday, another raffle, and then on to another week as we get ready for the Chokers. I'm saying there's a chance. So, enough of that. Let's move on to the other side of the ball. The defense. Gee, where do I start? We have the lowest amount of quarterback pressures in the entire league through week eight. We got no pressure on freaking neck beard at all whatsoever. Andrew Luck was able to pretty much do whatever the hell he wanted. We, we really didn't stop them or slow them down at all. Our defensive backs and our safeties were, were allowing pretty much a no-name wide receiver core to, to run around and just, just be open pretty much whole, the whole damn game. It We, we allowed three tight ends score touchdowns three tight ends first in the NFL <sighs> we start Conley and Melvin get get the action again um, at corners and it doesn't seem to matter what combination Reggie Nelson was a healthy scratch, so we, it was nice not to see Reggie Nelson out there. Carl Joseph was trying to put the pop on people, but it just seemed like there was just always somebody running open in our secondary. Always. Always. Oh, for the big contest that's coming up, Hot Neil, it costs, this costs nothing to enter. It costs nothing to enter. Just your time... And you got to be around at the right time. There's going to be some trivia questions involved. You just, you just wait till I post all the details. But it's not going to cost any money. This is a nothing out of your pocket. Our special Thanksgiving contest. For the month of November. 
Gunther T. Courts, I don't know what to say. His his scheme. I just don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. His scheme just As we talked in the offseason, his scheme has been able to make your average type linebackers um, take take more of your above average players and make them look like superstars in his scheme. Supposedly our linebackers fit right into to his scheme. And we're going to look really great, and I'm still waiting to see that. Marquel Lee has been somewhat of a shining spot, but other than that, Whitehead has been a big disappointment. Um, obviously, the Derek Johnson experiment was, was short-lived. That was a joke. Uh, Bruce Irvin is now on the trade block, obviously. He's, he's the next one up in your John Gruden moving sale. I can't take all this shit with me. Make me an offer. Welcome to the John Gruden moving sale. I can't take all this shit with me. Make me an offer. I got Bruce Irvin over here. Come on. He's good for another year or two. He's great in the locker room. You know, he's really only concerned about banging his wife when the, you know, the game's over. But you can surely get something out of him for another year or two. Come on. I can't take this shit with me. So Bruce Irvin is the, he's the new one. He's the new one up on the John Gruden moving sale. Got, you ain't got to remove the moving van for him, man. Sorry. Sorry, Bruce. <laughs> got to cut you. Got to cut you. See what we can get for you. What's that? You got some string and a piece of cheese. So, you got you a Bruce Irvin. Congratulations. I hope it's Swiss. He's, he's really been non-existent on the field. Have you seen Bruce Irvin? When was the last time? Fuck. A low pick for Irvin. What what, what are you going to get out of Bruce Irvin? Really? He's, he's at the end of his career. He's... I mean, really. He's at the end of his career. How many more stops has this guy got? Honestly. What, what has he done to make himself marketable off of his 2018 play. I mean, it's not like his stock is rising. Like, wow, that Bruce Irvin, man, he's, he's really, he's really looking like he's still at the peak form. Ain't nobody saying that. Nobody's saying that. Like I'm saying, piece of string and some cheese. Maybe like, you know, second half of a subscription to Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. Does anybody even get that anymore? Who the hell subscribes to Sports Illustrated anymore? Does anybody still read that shit? <laughs> the magazine where the news is always late. Oh, he'll be he'll be gone. He's gone. He, uh, he's part of the moving sale. Can't take all this shit with us. You got it's gotta go. <laughs> A jock strap? You think he's worth that much? I'm st I'm sticking with my piece of string and cheese. I think that's about all we can get. I might be able to make half a sandwich out of him. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? But. The defense, bad, bad, bad. It, as much as you want to blame it on the defense, the offense just couldn't continue to trade punches without the defense helping out a little bit. They just didn't help out at all. Not at all. They, they really didn't. Only forced one punt by the Colts, and they, you just needed, you needed something from the D. They just they were got walked by a rookie running back and a, and a squad of wide receivers who's not elite at all. We're talking a two and five Colts team, people. Two and five. 
They put up 42 points on that ass. That's just not good. Just not good. Now the special teams, again, you get you get one one decent punt and one weak ass punt from our rookie punter. He's he just he he's so hot and cold. I don't know what to think of this kid, but he has not been consistent. Um, thank God the new kicker come in and at least was banging um, the extra points in with without any issue. So. Oh man, if you're still talking about 52, you need to get the fuck over it. I'm with Anthony on that one, man. That that ship is fucking sailed. Psh, come on. Are you one of them pathetic motherfuckers that, you know, you know, broke up with your girlfriend, you already banging some new chick, and you're worried about what she's doing? Are you that guy? Come on, man. You don't want to be that guy. You're the guy that gets harassment charges and then you know gets labeled as a stalker. You get the restraining order. Sir, you need to stay 500 feet away from her at all times. You don't want to be that guy. Let 52 go. Come on. Yeah, we're already sleeping with somebody else. May not be quite as sexy, but, you know, we done moved on. Gotta move on. That shit's over in the NFC anyway. Never gonna see it again. <laughs> Gotta let it go. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. We all know that guy. But we can, you won't be that guy. <laughs> it's a good analogy. Now, <laughs> moving on and looking ahead. Man. So I woke up this morning, I posted it to the page, and a lot of you seen it as well, because uh, it was shared up, and, and freaking tons of comments have liked the hundreds of times. Um, but the first thing I woke up to was a story from one of the Bay Area um, news, news uh, sources proclaiming the 49ers-Raiders game, the last battle of the Bay, Thursday night primetime game, as the worst primetime game in NFL history. That fucking ain't nothing like going out with a bang, baby. The worst. The last battle of the Bay is the worst primetime game in history, possibly. Well, fucking A, isn't that awesome? <laughs> now, see, the jerseys are cool. You, what you got to do is you got to stick it in the back of the closet until they retire. And then when they retire, you can wear them again. Then they're throwbacks. But until then, nah. You can't wear that shit when they're on another team. Nah, you can't, man. That's Jersey rules. Didn't you read the instructions when you got it? No. If he, he, he can't be wearing the jersey as some assholes playing for the Bears. Come on now. No. Now, when he retires, he can bust that shit back out. I rock by Philip Buchanan every once in a while now. I'm like, yeah, he's the number one draft pick once. Yeah, he's a bust. Fuck it. He's retired now. <laughs> I got a Mac jersey. I'll never wear it again. Until he retires. Then I'll rock it and remember the good times. But no. Not until then. Exactly. Anthony McFadden's back in the rotation. He's off the shelf. You see, he's hanging with the boys now. He went to London. He was a Blitnikoff. He's, he, he's back. He's a Raider. He's back in the fold. Just see, just like that. Perfect example. I can rock my McFadden jersey again. Back in the fold. Oh. See, so it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> It's all about the cycle of life when it comes to a jersey. What about Cooper? You can't rock a Cooper jersey, Jonathan. He's a cowboy. How you gonna rock a cowboy's jersey? Nah. Even my son knows better. He's like, well, shit, I got two jerseys I can't wear now. He ain't got no jerseys left. He refuses to wear his Latavius Murray jersey. Won't wear his Mac jersey. Won't wear his Crabtree jersey. And now he can't wear his Cooper jersey. Now I gotta go buy him new jerseys. I said I ain't buying any more jerseys till next year because I don't know who the fuck Gruden's cutting. 
I'm not spending any more money. I'm going to have to start sending my receipts to his ass for reimbursement. If I go sign... Oh, shit. What, am I going to go get him a Brandon fucking LaFell jersey? Good Lord, we don't know if he'll be around in three weeks. He, if he has one more good game, Gruden will trade his ass for a new car and a sixth round pick. <laughs> so, no. No jerseys until next year. <laughs> I don't even know who to buy for myself. Shit. I, I rock my custom jersey at the game anyway, so I don't need one for the game. But I like to switch it up. You know, I'm, I'm superstitious. If we lost in that jersey when I was at that game or watching that game, I don't wear that jersey. Uh-uh. We got to switch it up. Till we win. And that jersey rides week to week. I swear it works. Superstitious. A little bit. But. I thought about Arden Key. I ain't gonna lie. I thought about Key. I was gonna get Connolly, but, yo, know, yeah. Here's what I think about Gary on Connolly. So, I go out and get a Connolly hat, as you see, right when he's drafted. Number 28. Hell, he didn't even keep that fucking number till the season started. Now he's something else. This is the third number he's changed. Bullshit. <sighs> Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. So, the worst game in the history of primetime football. Man, what a billing that is, huh, Raider Nation? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. 2016, we're on the cusp of something great. Now, the only thing we're on the edge of is the toilet bowl. One of us is going in. Us or the Niners. It's like, it's like, you know, you, you've, you've been out there, at, you know, at the pool or the lake or the, you know, we, you know, you're on the thing, the floating thing, and you're trying to knock each other off. That's kind of like us in the Niners, where we're like battling on the edge of the toilet bowl, and, you know, the loser gets thrown in. That, that's kind of where we're at. Isn't that exciting? Lovely. <laughs> that, that's that's kind of that's kind of what we got. Good thing is we all get to watch it, and it's, you know, it's nationally televised live, and hopefully, under the lights... The last battle of the bay. Some, something, something percolates up. This this little thing called pride. Maybe that shows up on Thursday night. Maybe this little thing called pride, when the entire fucking world is watching your ass. Maybe just a little thing called pride shows up, and you can go out there and kick somebody's teeth in. Cause that would be fabulous. I just want to see a win. I just want to not have to come in the next day after my team played and listen to the people in the office, you know, people out at the warehouse talking shit. It, it'd just be nice. It'd be nice. Just once. I had some bitch pigeon fan walk in my office today. I say, man, what happened? I'm like, listen, you got to rub it in last week when you beat us. Now get the fuck out. You don't get to come rub it in again. Get out. <laughs> like, it, like it's, it's just fucking open season now. Like we're the, you know, like I'm supposed to get a fucking sympathy card now every Monday. I'm, I'm really sorry, man. Our thoughts are with you. Now fuck you. I don't need your sympathy. Eat a dick. Raider Nation, motherfucker. Win or lose. <laughs> yeah, we suck. It's a process. We're working it. I hope. Fuck off. <laughs> God. I hate being, I, I, I hate it. I, I just hate it. That, that's the worst thing. 
the worst thing about being this bad is is no enjoyment in the season of being a fan. That that's really what it comes down to when your team is this bad. You you are basically muzzled for the entire season that you waited so long for. You don't even get to talk a, the least little bit of smack. Nothing. You you're just muzzled, neutered in every sports conversation. You know, as soon as they start saying something, you you want to say something, and you then they just look at you like and you know, it's like fuck. You know, it just sucks. It just sucks. Because at this point of the season, now, now you're like, you're one and six. You know, of course you're still going to, you know, I don't let nobody talk shit about my team. I, I'll give it back twice as much as I take it. Probably three times. I don't give a shit. It's like I told the freaking Colts, ex-Colt wide receiver that works for me. Sent me a goddamn text. I said, fucking Colts Nation. So I said, what the fuck is that? Some third world ass country? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Motherfucker, you ain't getting overtime for the next two months now. You fucked yourself. Just shut up. One graciously. <laughs> Waiting for my ass as soon as I walked in this morning. Oh, you dirty bastard. Colts Nation. Come on. Never heard of such a thing. Nobody's ever heard of such a thing. Because it doesn't exist. It's like Neverland. Colt's Corral or Horse Shit or whatever the hell it is. This sure the hell ain't no nation. Yeah, you're at that garbage. Fucking retread ass fucking team anyway. What the hell are you? The Indianapolis Colts. What, what are you? There's a team in Baltimore. You, you I mean, some retread team anyway. Where do we get our second win? I honestly think it could really be this week. I, I think there's a good possibility. Oh, that was a shot, Jacob, and I did see that. I 100% uh, seen that. Where Coop came out and said, oh, Cowboys Nation, let's get to work. Yeah, that, that was a complete shot um, across the bow right there. You you know that was um, a dig. Because obviously he just got traded the very same day that video pops up. So that, that was a complete dig. And, you know, it is what it is. And you've you got Jerry Jones over there basically, you know, <laughs> just slobbing all over Amari Cooper. Like he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. He, you know, he's basically, you know, holding his dick when he pisses. He, Jerry Jones is just enamored with this guy. He thinks he's his next Michael Irvin, I guess. Come on, man. It's, it's amazing. He says, Amari Cooper is as advertised. As advertised? What the hell does that even mean? Like, what? He drops the fucking ball a lot? <laughs> as advertised? He looks really good in practice. What? He's as advertised. He ain't played one goddamn snap in a fucking game. You come tell me as advertised when I see him out there catching uh, catching bombs from uh, Dak Prescott. Then, then we'll see he's as advertised. A number one pick. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you're you're going to be regretting that one. You're going to be regretting that one. Because the no, listen. I bought this new car three years ago. You know, I, I put some miles on it. It's still in pretty good shape. You want to buy it for the same thing I bought? I paid for it. Sure. Who does that? So basically, we just rented a number one pick for a few years, and then got it back. Thanks, Jer. <laughs> But Amari Cooper's as advertised, right? Okay. Okay. Good luck with that. You're reaching, my man. You're reaching. You know what you're you know what you're wishing? You didn't release Des Bryant because you don't want you wish you'd have kept Des Bryant because he's better than anything you got. 
and you know you won't eat the crow to bring him back. So you had to go find somebody like, fucking man. I know Gruden will take a number one. I'll fucking give it to him. I bet he's as advertised. What does that even mean? The, the dumbest ass thing. He's as advertised. <laughs> Oh, fuck Jerry Jones. Fuck the Cowboys. Fuck Amari Cooper. Hell no, you can't wear your Cooper jersey no more. Not till he retires. No way. Sorry, it's just the rule. I got a sweet ass Michael Crabtree freaking tank top basketball jersey. I can't wear that shit now. It sucks. But I'll be able to wear it again someday. Someday. It's just the rules. Hey, it's the unwritten jersey rules. I, I can't help it. So, now remember, tomorrow night, solid hour of everything silver and black, the Raider Nation Report with yours truly. Wednesday, Prime joins me as we rip through all of our picks and we get you up to speed on where our standings are currently. Then on Thursday, an hour before kickoff, we have a Raider reaction. Reaction shop raffle. $1, $3, and one $5 raffle ticket item. We're going to give away some... Uh, free stuff to those just watching so make sure you check the page Wednesday night we'll post all the raffle info so during the day on Thursday you can uh, get your raffle tickets secured we'll also be selling the raffle tickets live right up until the second we raffle every item off also like I said we'll just be giving some stuff away to those watching live also on Thursday we are going to announce the biggest Raider reaction prize pack contest we've ever had for the whole month most of the month of november our thanksgiving contest which we will draw our winner on thanksgiving day the contest starts on the first all the details will be dropped on the first not doesn't cost you anything to participate but of course you got to do some stuff to be able to earn getting your name put in the hat for the largest rate of reaction prize pack ever and trust me you want to win this sucker you're going to be like, it's going to be like a silver and black Christmas when that son of a bitch hits your house, that package. Whoever wins it, I want you to video that because it's, you're going to be a happy son of a bitch whoever wins that thing. I'm telling you. If you've ever got one of our fan packs, if ask the people that want them, there's nobody's disappointed when you get one, then this one's better than any of those have ever been. So, details coming soon. And... Because there's no game Sunday, we're going to have another raffle Sunday just for the hell of it and give away some more shit. And the same thing. It'll be $1 and $3 raffle ticket items. So, maybe a $5 one at most. But that's it. One $5, a couple of threes, and the rest will be ones, and then some free stuff uh, we're just going to give away. Now, as I like to end every one of my solo segments... See? Just ask Leslie. Leslie wouldn't lie to you. She can vouch for the quality of the prize pack. I like to end with every one of my special little segments. The little segment I like to call the WTF. Now tonight, I would like to touch on a subject. Maybe close to uh, some of you may hit a little close to home. Because some of you may be these people, maybe these type of fans. Because I've seen them in the groups. I've seen them on the page. I've seen them in the show. They're here, probably right now. A couple of you. You're the fan who wants our team to now lose on Sundays. Who now thinks we should lose. That we should come in and try to tank. Like you should purposely try to lose a football game. You see, that is something that you just can never, never do if you are a true professional. You have to, even if you don't have all of the talent that you need to have on the field, you still go out and try to win every snap. You try to win the game. That is just being a professional. At no point... Will I ever, ever 
root for my team to lose. Ever. I don't care if it increases our draft pick spot one or two places. I don't care. The reality of the matter is we have three next season. Two of those have no bearing on where the hell we finish at all. It's another team. We're going to get three first-round draft picks no matter where they shake out, and it's going to be scattered throughout the first round. We're going to do fine. Our team doesn't need to come out and lay the fuck down. They need to continue to go out there and fight to get better and to try to win every goddamn week. I do not believe the team is tanking. I do believe John Gruden is parting and gutting the team to rebuild it in his own image. And there is a loss of talent on the team due to that. But for the guys on the team to not still come out on every goddamn Sunday, every Thursday night, every Monday night, and continue to fight to win and not have the Raider Nation behind them, trying to will them to that as well, to me, to me is just absurd. The fact that a certain fraction of fans want to say let's lose out man that really makes me say what the fuck never ever ever under any circumstance I don't care what pick you get if you lose I will never, ever, ever root for my team to lose. Ever. Ever. I went through the age of darkness just like everybody else. And still, every single week, I could see a way my team could win. Because I believe on any given Sunday, any team can win. Exactly, Jonathan. How is that even possible? And you call yourself a fan. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. We got an action-packed week filled for you right here on Raider Reaction. So make sure you stay tuned every night and every day to the page. Make sure you follow the page, like the page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hardcore Challenge Live Studio Webcast on YouTube. Search it, subscribe to it. Follow us on Twitter, at Raider Reaction. Raider Reaction, Raider under slash reaction 81 on Instagram. Follow us there as well. The social media takeover is coming soon. We got two raffles this week. One pregame Thursday, one on Sunday. Big contest announcement for Thanksgiving. Dropping November 1st. We got Prime on Wednesday. The Raider Nation Report tomorrow. Black Friday. We got all kinds of shit. All kinds of shit going down. So make sure you stay right here. Hey, if the Raiders ain't popping, at least Raider Reaction is. Thank you for joining us, each and every one of us. We always appreciate it. Our Band of Pirates. Thank you. I'm out. Peace. Love. Radiation.